Hi everyone, John here from Solar Integrations. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a device which I recently purchased called the Smart Day Dongle version 4. Um, it caught my eye for a number of reasons and I thought it would be a good idea to do a review on the channel of the unit. It's not going to be a, a full installation because the, the guy who makes these, Heinz Molke, He's uh, done a full installation video, so if you do purchase one and you want to know how to install it, you can just watch that video. Um, this is really a just an overview of the device, what it consists of, um, how it works, what, what the options are, and then um, what I think of it, some of, the, um, some of the issues which I have had with the device, and... Um, then also um, some of the nice features of the device. It's, uh, I think it's going to make a lot of people's lives a lot easier. It's a great way of uh, connecting your SunSync or Day inverter up to Home Assistant and taking advantage of pulling all, all that information in. So I hope you enjoy the video. I know I haven't put out anything for a, for a while, but um, I hope this will uh, make up for it. And um, let me know what you guys think in the comments, please. Um, I am, uh, I'm a bit mixed on this one. I have the things that I like about it and the things that I don't like about it. I'll go over them towards the end of the video and, uh, let me know what you think. I also just wanted to say, I've put in a comparison of the smart day dongle versus the other options that you've got at the end of the video. So, um, if you are evaluating what the options are, please, um, check that out at the end of the video. I'm sure you'll find it interesting. So I've spoken a, f a fair bit to Heinz, uh, to Heinz Molke, the, the gent who makes these. Um, he's a software developer and um, he's got a little bit of uh, some electronics background as well and some uh, electrical background. So he's put this package together. It consists of an ESP32 together with a shield which he imports from, um, from China which has got a built-in um, power adapter for it. It'll um, drop any volt, any supply voltage from, I think, 18 volts down to uh, 5 volts for the, for the ESP32. And it also has a built-in um, RS-485. And it has a, a CAN interface as well. Um, the nice thing about this is that there is no uh, soldering going on, so you don't have to worry about any connections, and um, there's no AC adapter either. It'll um, in the 8, 12, and 16 kilowatt inverters, they've all got a um, a 12 volt power supply inside the inverter, so you can just connect this up to the 12 volts. I'm not sure about the 5 volt. Um, you'd have to follow up with Heinz and find out what the option, if, if he knows what the situation is with that. Um, it's a very neat and tidy solution um, using the ESP32. And um, it gives, uh, gives a, I think, 146 uh, um, sensors. So it's got a, a more than um, we have on the... On our ES, standard ESP home um, solution, he's done a, a, some extra work there to find out um, some extra some extra values. So this is this is a commercial product. I'll put a link into uh, the Smart Home Integrations website in the show description. Um, he's got options there for a five, an eight, a sixteen, and then um, master and slave packages. Um, he charges 800 Rand, including VAT, for the units. Um, now, which I don't think is unreasonable, considering that he's importing the boards and putting every, everything together himself and provides some sort of level of support as well. Um, now, the uh, I'll include the link to the website that you can order them from. Um, he does have some in stock. Um, and... Um, it looks like a very nice little solution. 
Okay, so the first thing I need to do is set up my ESP32 for my own Wi-Fi network. The way I do that is I'm going to, my ESP32 is plugged in and um, it's that's been given a little bit of time to boot up and you're going to see you're going to get a configure day inverter master Wi-Fi um, spot. You're going to connect to that and it'll come up, it'll give you the... Um, the details of your Wi-Fi connections that you've got available from the ESP32 at that time. Um, I'm just going to connect it to my network. Um, I'm going to put in my um, password. Okay. And um, that will now give my ESP32 some time to connect to my network. And I should then be able to... I've got to connect back to my network. Okay, and I should now see my ESP32 connected on my network. It should, uh, that'll give me, uh, so that ESP32 will now be able, will be connected onto my network. So once you have um, connected to your, um, your Smart Day dongle and um, put in your Wi-Fi credentials and it's connected to your network, um, your Home Assistant will pick it up automatically as an ESP Home device which has been connected on your network. You don't have to have ESP Home installed, um, but it will connect it up automatically. What will then happen is you need to get the, um, the, the encryption key from your email, which you received from Smart Home Integrations when you ordered it. And um, you're going to add that in over here, like that. And it will add it into your Home Assistant for you. Now, what you'll see down here, there it's uh, picked it up. And those are all the um, all the sensors that it's picking up. You can see it's connected to my um, to my inverter at the moment. Now, if you want to um, just add this data onto your dashboard, you're going to need to go to Overview and um, take over control of your dashboard. Um, what we will do, we'll just create a new dashboard over here. And let's just call this one inverter. Okay, create. Okay, now if I go back to settings, integrations, done over here. Now what I can do is just add these into my onto my inverter onto my inverter dashboard. Next, add to dashboard. Hmm. Okay, sorry, just have to go and take control of this dashboard myself, edit dashboard, start with an empty dashboard, take control. Okay, there we go. Integrations, ESP Home. Want to add that. Okay, so now I can add all of these sensors to my inverter dashboard. Add to dashboard. And what you'll see, we're going to go over this now because there is Something which is one of my uh, gripes with this at the moment. And you will notice that if you buy one of these, you'll have your own little unique number over here. Now, the problem with that is that um, there I've got all the data coming in. But if I go and have a look at this over here, my entity name is inverter underscore 424054 which means that every one of these is unique. And if I want to use the um, Day Solar Desktop over here from um, which Heinz is customized for, um, for his dongles, um, these sensors aren't going to match up to these names over here. And I'm going to have to change all of these, which is um, there you can see... Um, what I have to do is go in here and take this out on, I have to update each one. Okay. 
So um, easiest way is going to go into automations down here. Go into the device and update it over here. So take out 42054. Next one. And I'm going to have to update every one of these manually. And there are 145 of them. So um, that's a bit of a downer. But otherwise, it's very, very easy to get, um, to get it connected and all the data in. Um, the, once you've done that, the importation of, the, um, of these dashboards is very easy. As I said, Heinz has put together a video on how to do that. And um, that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, the second thing which I, um, which I, I thought was a bit of a problem was the, um, if you have a look in your, um, in your Wi-Fi IP address, that's the IP address of the ESP32 on the network. If I go to that page, um, I can just access that page and I can change my inverter settings and all sorts of things from over here and there's no username or password on there. So I brought that up to Heinz and he tells me that the latest version of the firmware um, does include a, um, a username and password which you can customize as well. So I think that's a, a very nice improvement from his side. Um, having this little web page is also pretty nifty. I find it um, you can get a it's a uh, it's a direct way of accessing of knowing what the values are for each uh, for each sensor that you've got coming in from the uh, from from the inverter. So pretty nifty. Um, I just had the security concern which I raised, and that sounds like it's been sorted out. But you'll need to uh, follow up on that as well. So updating this ESP32, um, obviously being part of the open source community myself, I like to be able to change settings and do that type of thing myself. You can't do that with this, um, with this setup because Heinz has uploaded his own firmware, uh, his own version of the ESP home firmware onto these units. And... Um, you can't disassemble this and get access to the uh, to the code. So basically, the uh, the bonnet on your car is locked. Now, the only issue I have with that, if it works, is that um, how do we do updates and things? Um, now, Heinz has said to me that he's busy rolling out in his new firmware an over the air update option. Um, you will need to go and update the firmware yourself using a, uh, a USB cable. And once that's done, um, you will be able, to, uh, the ESP32 will download the latest firmware, which I think is a, is a good move from his side. Um, and um, it will be interesting to see how that progresses. Um, it is a it is a product which is in uh, still still under quite a lot of development. So I'm sure there will be changes and improvements coming along. And I think it's quite important to be able to uh, to roll those out to your users as well, users as well. So Heinz does has, have a uh, idea as to how to do that. So I thought it would be a good idea to do a comparison of the Smart Day Dongle version four and the Keller ZA integration and the ESP32 integration using ESP Home. Um, I thought it would be a good idea to give you guys a, a sort of top level view of what the differences are and um, then you can make your own decision as to what, what solution you want to use. Um, the, the Smart Day dongle Keller ZA, ESP32 have all got um, uh, writable inverter settings. So you can change your uh, battery priorities. You can change your SOC levels in your uh, batteries and your 
uh, times, all of that stuff, they all basically have access to the same, um, the same Modbus registers there. Um, the Smart Day dongle is not open source. Um, it's, uh, um, Heinz write, um, writes the firmware to the ESP32s that he's using himself and he's done some, um, some work on that. So he's keeping that all closed source. The Killer ZA is on GitHub and the ESP32 is on, um, Slipx06's, uh, GitHub pages. So they are all open source and you have access to the, to the code on that as well. Um, sensors, um, Heinz, uh, the smart day dongle has got 145 entities on it, which is very nice. It's got quite a wide range. Um, I'm, I think he has to do that, um, because you can't customize it. So he has to basically cater for everything. Um, the killer ZA integration is 61 entities and the ESP32 in my case is 91 entities. I'm not sure. It'll probably be a little bit less than that as standard because I'm, I've put in the entities for the, my third MPPT controller on my inverter. Um, um, are they customizable? Um, no, you don't have a customization option on the smart day dongle. Um, basically, I think you would, if you messaged um, Heinz and told him what it is that you wanted to do, um, he, he would probably be able to help you out there. He's a very helpful guy and he knows his firmware very well. Um, but you can't do it yourself. Um, the Keller ZA in, uh, integration, you can add your own entities if you've got the Modbus registers. Um, you can add in your third and fourth MPPT controllers, um, all that type of thing. And um, likewise in the ESP32 as well. Um, the cost per unit, um, Smart Day dongle is going to cost you about 800 Rand a unit, which includes the software and hardware, which I think is um, pretty reasonable, um, considering he's importing those uh, shields and everything himself. The Killer ZA integration, um, the software is all free. Um, but it does require a Solarman dongle. It won't work with the SunSync dongle. And um, it also needs, uh, if you don't have this, the Solarman dongle, then you would need a USB to RS-485 or an Ethernet to RS-485 bridge. Um, USB to RS-485 is about 200 Rand and a bridge is about seven or 800 Rand. Um, and then if you go with the ESP32 and the RS-485, um, depending on which RS-485 board you use, um, you could use the uh, one which we've been using up to now, which is will cost you about 200 Rand. Um, if you import uh, one, of the, um, one of the ones with the built-in power supply and RS-485 from Electro Dragon, it'll probably cost you a bit more maybe about 300 bucks. Um, and then ease of use, um, the smart day dongle is super easy to install and set up. Um, has its, uh, it's very, very easy. Only the only downside I can see on it is the, um, is the setting up of the entity names. Um, you have to go through and edit all the entity names to get them to be compatible with the dashboards from Slipex 06 and um, the updating of them. I'm pretty sure that um, uh, Heinz has updated that so that there's a username and password on the web interface. Um, Keller ZA, all the updates, hand, uh, ease of use, very easy to install and set up. Um, I did a video on that a while ago. I'll put a link through to it if you guys are interested. ESP32 can be tricky. Um, especially if you're doing the soldering with the, um, with the five volt RS-485 board. Um, I think it's probably better to use the board from Electro Dragon that Hans is using in his ones, but, um, there are no local suppliers that I know of. So, um, you would need to import that yourself. And that obviously takes a bit of time to do. Um, Otherwise, I think that's about it. Oh, the, the updates of the units, um, updates, 
Um, Heinz is rolling out some new firmware which you will be able to do over the air updates with. And um, his latest firmware, I believe, also locks down that web interface page, which was a worry, but I think that all that's going to be sorted out. Um, the Killer ZA updates all come through um, GitHub. So um, you can either set them to do it automatically or, um, or uh, when you want to do it. And then the ESP32, um, you're not going to have any automatic updates or any updates you're going to do. You're going to have to write new firmware to the ESP32 using ESP Home. Um, I really don't think that is a big issue, though, unless your configuration is changing and you want to have access to new sensors or something like that. Otherwise, um, that's about it. All looks good. Okay, so in conclusion, what do I think of the Smart Day dongle? I think it's a great option for people who don't want to get involved with programming their ESP32s. I think it's a very easy to use plug-in option. Um, you pay a little bit extra for that, which um, is very understandable um, that you get a little bit of support um, with your purchase. And um, there isn't really a lot of risk. Um, I mean, the, it's an, it is based on ESP32 hardware. So if you did want to change it, you could do that yourself later stage and reformat it. So you're not going to be locked into it forever um, if the updates stop coming through or something like that. But there's a lot of functionality there and Heinz seems like a very decent guy. Um, I think he'll be um, more than happy to help most people out if they have any issues. And um, I look forward to seeing where it goes to. It looks like a, a really interesting product and um, I think it's going to make a lot of people's lives a whole load easier connecting up their uh, inverters to Home Assistant. So um, all the best to Heinz. I hope it all uh, keeps on growing and getting better and better all the time. Um, please let me know what you guys think of, um, of this format. Um, I've tried to keep it as balanced as possible. And uh, I appreciate your comments in the, uh, in the YouTube comments. And um, if you've got any questions or anything like that, or if I've made any mistakes, then please let me know. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. See you next time.